Uh, thank you, for Chairman, to, for introducing me, and uh, uh, thank you for gathering uh, to listen. And I'd like to talk about uh, uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty relation, um, violation, and reformulation. Uh, first of all, I like to uh, explain about uncertainty relation uh, in uh, Heisenberg's original uh, formulation. In 1925, uh, Heisenberg uh, found the matrix uh, mechanics, uh, in which he found a commutation relation between momentum and uh, uh, position observable. And PQ minus QP is equal to uh, H over uh, 2 pi i. And this uh, uh, commutation relation <coughs> formally uh, play a role uh, to produce uh, discrete energy from uh, continuous uh, position and the continuous momentum of the variables. <coughs> so uh, this relation is uh, formally very um, important. Uh, however, uh, it's operational or uh, physical. Uh, meaning is not so uh, clear at that time. In 1927, uh, Heisenberg found uh, his uh, uncertainty principle, or uh, he called it uncertainty relation, which is in the form uh, epsilon q times eta p uh, is uh, larger than h over uh, 4 pi. Here, uh, epsilon q is mean error or average error of position Q. Eta P is average disturbance of P. <coughs> uh, he introduced uh, this relation by the famous gamma ray microscope thought experiment and uh, claimed it to be a mathematical consequence of a commutation relation. <coughs> Uh, gamma ray microscope thought experiment is just uh, in, introduced from the uh, reciprocal uh, relation between uh, resolution power of microscope and uh, the uh, amount of uh, change in momentum uh, caused by a Compton recoil. Uh, so, uh, if the uh, wavelength is long, um, <coughs> resolution power is, uh, uh, <coughs> ah, I'm sorry, uh, if, if the wavelength is very short, uh, resolution power is very good. However, the uh, disturbance is uh, large. And uh, <coughs> if the uh, wavelength is long, uh, then uh, resolution power becomes bad. However, uh, disturbance becomes small. <clears throat> uh, this is the, uh, his uh, original uh, paper. In the place uh, he explained this thought experiment, he calls uh, Q1. Let to Q1 be the precision with which the value Q is known. Q1 is, say, the mean error of Q. Therefore, here the wavelength of light let P1 be the precision with which the value P is determinable. That is here, the discontinuous change of P in the Compton effect. Then according to the elementary laws of the Compton effect, P1 and Q1 stand in the relation uh, of this uh, uncertainty relation. <coughs> and he writes this, that this relation is a straightforward mathematical consequence of the relation uh, commutation relation uh, <coughs> will be shown below. So uh, he will uh, actually uh, show mathematical argument which derive this relation. And his mathematical argument is as follows. <coughs> uh, he uses uh, Kennard's, nowadays we call this Kennard's relation, 
uh, for uh, standard deviations of position and the standard deviation momentum. Uh, Heisenberg originally proved in 1927 paper uh, this relation for only a Gaussian wave function. And then immediately after this uh, <coughs> paper uh, published, uh, Kenlas uh, proved this relation for a general wave function. <coughs> and this relation said that uh, product of the standard deviations of position and uh, standard deviation momentum always uh, <coughs> equal or larger than uh, h bar over 2. <coughs> and then uh, he didn't uh, consider uh, this is his uh, uncertainty relation. His uncertainty relation uh, is uh, just we explained before. Then he derived mathematically from this relation to his uncertainty relation. Um, in order to do that, uh, he assumed the uh, following uh, two assumptions. Uh, in that day, the, most of the uh, physicists uh, considered that if you make a precise position measurement, then uh, after the measurement, uh, standard deviation of Q is equal to zero because uh, at that time, uh, precise measurement make uh, a complete state reduction, and after the uh, measurement, uh, state becomes eigenstate of the position. That has on zero or standard deviation. His assumption, uh, we consider that. Uh, after the simultaneous measurement of Q and P with mean errors, epsilon Q and epsilon P, the post-measurement standard deviation sigma Q and sigma P satisfies this relation. <clears throat> so if this is to be zero, uh, this uh, always to be zero. So he assumed that, or um, many people in that time, including von Neumann, assumed that uh, if the uh, mean error of the measurement is epsilon, then after the measurement, uh, the wave function becomes uh, incompletely make a reduction. And uh, such incompleteness is described in this inequality. So after the uh, measurement uh, with uh, error epsilon q, the wave packet becomes uh, reduced with this uh, standard deviation. <coughs> and also, or if you make a, a p measurement simultaneously, then after the, this simultaneous measurement, the standard deviation p also uh, satisfies this relation. <coughs> and uh, so uh, this immediately uh, leads to the uh, uncertainty relation for uh, errors of the joint measurement or simultaneous measurement of Q and P because you combine these three relations, uh, epsilon Q times epsilon P is always uh, larger than or equal to uh, one half of H bar. And uh, in order to derive uh, <coughs> Error and the disturbance relation, he, he considers the uh, following uh, assumption. If Q can be measured with uh, error epsilon Q and the momentum disturbance eta P, then uh, Q and P can be simultaneously measured with uh, epsilon Q and epsilon P is equal to eta P. <coughs> because uh, in the first measurement, uh, we get uh, <coughs> Q value with uh, error epsilon Q, but then uh, P, P value is uh, uh, remained with this uh, disturbance. And then after the Q measurement, we can precisely measure the P. In that case, <coughs> precise measurement of P uh, includes uh, our error epsilon P is equal to eta P for the uh, value of the uh, momentum in, in the time of the first measurement. And so we <coughs> just say that uh, epsilon and eta p is equal to uh, epsilon and epsilon p for uh, simultaneous measurement. The simultaneous measurement satisfies those relations. So we immediately conclude that uh, epsilon q times eta p is <coughs> satisfied this relation. And this, uh, from this, uh, eta epsilon Q times eta P is equal to or larger than H bar uh, over two. 
So uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle uh, follows from Kenner's uh, inequality and uh, those two assumptions. <coughs> now uh, we consider the uh, Heisenberg's relation uh, in the context of uh, very uh, rigorous uh, measurement theory. Um, in a rigorous mathematical measurement theory, it is important to uh, consider the most uh, universal uh, model of measuring process. And we <coughs> axiomatically proved that uh, this kind of the, uh, model is universal, means that every physically possible statistical property can be derived uh, from uh, this model. And, <coughs> All of the statistical uh, properties derived from this model is physically realizable. So uh, this model is just uh, described by a four mathematical objects. Uh, K is a Hilbert space modeling the sp state space of the probe. Uh, C is a unit vector on K uh, modeling the uh, initial state of the uh, probe. We, we assume uh, the measurement is carried out uh, by the interaction between uh, <coughs> object system described by Hilbert space H and the uh, probe system K. Then uh, you describe a unitary operator on H tensor K, which physically modeling the uh, measuring interaction, or uh, time evolution during the uh, interaction is time turned on. And then M is a self-adjoint operator on K, which models the uh, meter observable to be read uh, after the interaction. <laughs> so uh, if you are given those four uh, uh, mathematical descriptions of the measuring process, then uh, which this uh, model determines output distribution and quantum state reduction. Uh, output distribution is that there are <coughs> Uh, probability distribution of the outcome of the measurement in state row. Uh, this is just uh, written in this Born um, formula. Uh, we <coughs> measure the uh, meta observable after the interaction. Before interaction, we assume the state is row in the object, state is C in the uh, probe. So initial state is pro tensor product, and after the interaction, um, state becomes unitary evolved in this state. And then if you uh, read out the uh, meta observable, probability distribution is determined by Born formula in this form. And this uh, is also uh, written by POVM formalism in this way. Uh, and also a measurement operator formalism in this way. And the state reduction means that if you are given initial state row and uh, after measurement outcome x, then uh, problem is that what is the state just after the measurement uh, on conditional upon the output is small x. And this is given in this form. Uh, uh, this uh, state is uh, uh, a joint state uh, after the interaction, and then you uh, put the uh, projection and make uh, a partial trace, and then uh, you normalize uh, state, then we get uh, the state after the measurement conditional upon the uh, measurement outcome is small x. And this can be written the uh, instrument formalism uh, in this way. This is a, a completely positive uh, map, usually called operation corresponding to output x and by a normalization. <coughs> or uh, this is uh, <coughs> the form using the uh, measurement operator formalism. <coughs> Now we need to uh, define the error of the measurement. Heisenberg called Q1 as uh, the uh, mean error of uh, Q. <coughs> uh, the, then the, what is the meaning of the mean error? It is obvious that uh, this is uh, not the uh, naive uh, average, because naive average cancels out plus uh, positive error and the negative error. Uh, according to Gauss, uh, he defined the mean error uh, should be defined as the root mean square. Um, <clears throat> so uh, now we usually accept uh, Gauss' uh, definition for the mean error. So uh, we consider the uh, Heisenberg's uh, mean error to be root mean square. <clears throat> 
So uh, this mean depends on the state at the time of measurement. <coughs> so uh, if the uh, wave length of gamma ray is considered to be the mean error, yeah, <coughs> the resolution power usually is considered to be the uh, mean error of the uh, microscope uh, measurement uh, for position um, in the uh, scope of the uh, electron in the scope. But uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, state-dependent uh, notion <coughs> uh, because uh, the, uh, this resolution power uh, is defined only very specialized uh, situation in which the uh, electron is uh, placed very, very suitably inside the scope. If the electron is not in the scope of the uh, microscope or electron is on the moon, the uh, microscope cannot be considered as a measuring apparatus uh, with uh, mean error to be defined to be the uh, resolution power of the uh, micro. So all the <coughs> if you consider that the resolution power is a uh, <coughs> measurement error by microscope measurement. Uh, this uh, uh, definition is uh, uh, strictly uh, depending on uh, you assume very suitable uh, state is uh, assumed. <coughs> so uh, the, this uh, uh, wavelength uh, is considered to be the mean error only if a particular initial state of the electron is assumed. Thus, the uh, gamma ray thought experiment holds only state dependently. <coughs> Means that uh, Heisenberg considered some uh, special, in some special state, uh, he considered this uh, relation uh, is uh, derived. <coughs> now, uh, if X is the measured value and A is the true value to be measured, the classical definition of the root mean square of X uh, in measuring A is given in this form. Uh, error is uh, just X minus A. X is the measured value minus uh, true value. And the mean, root mean square is just the uh, square root of the uh, <coughs> mean of the uh, square of the error. Now we translate this definition into our measuring process. So given the measuring process, KCUM and the quantity uh, A0, or you, we want to uh, measure observable ray uh, at the time zero or to be measured. The measured value is represented by M delta T. This is, uh, we just uh, uh, take uh, delta T to be the uh, time duration uh, of the uh, measuring interaction. The measuring interaction, uh, it's described by U, so uh, M delta T it means the uh, U dollar uh, I tensor M uh, U. <coughs> so uh, the root mean square error of uh, this uh, meter reading M delta in measuring A0 or uh, on state psi is given by this formula. Uh, because uh, <coughs> this is uh, different, so this uh, operator represent uh, error, and this is a uh, root square root of uh, mean in the initial state of the uh, squared uh, error. <coughs> if uh, uh, those two operators are commuting, uh, then uh, this formula just uh, precisely reproduce the classical definition. Uh, so uh, this definition follows from the classical definition if M delta T and A is commuting. Uh, so that <coughs> any attempt to uh, uh, quantizing uh, notion of the root mean square should coincide with this definition. So this is uniquely uh, determined from the classical notion if M delta T and A zero is commuting. But if you, <coughs> those two do not commute, this definition is uh, one of the candidates for the uh, quantization of the classical notion of root mean square error. However, uh, we consider this is very reasonable quantization of the notion of the classical root mean square error. <coughs> uh, 
in, in the later uh, of this talk, we consider the model and uh, uh, root mean square error of the, we calculate those models, uh, root mean square error. But in that case, all these models satisfy this condition, um, those two uh, uh, commuting. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> Uh, our model analysis is, uh, does not depend on the particular definition of the noise. Uh, we, in, in all of this model satisfies this condition. <clears throat> now we define disturbance. Heisenberg called P1 as a discontinuous change of P. We define this to be the uh, root mean square uh, of the difference between um, B0 and B delta T. So root mean square change is defined to be this obviously. <laughs> now, uh, the Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty relation uh, did not, uh, was not um, used for a real uh, physical uh, debate uh, or physical uh, <clears throat> uh, consideration, except for some thought experiment. However, uh, in the late 1970s, uh, Brzezinski and the collaborator uh, <coughs> derived a standard quantum limit uh, to uh, interferometer type gravitational wave detectors uh, from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and promoting a uh, resonator type uh, approach. So they claim that uh, interferometer type uh, <laughs> Gravitational wave detector uh, inherently has uh, this uh, limit. However, uh, if you use a reson resonator type uh, detector, uh, you can circumvent uh, such kind of uh, limitation from uncertainty principle. <coughs> However, in 1983, uh, uh, Horace Yuen claimed that such a limit can be broken by a, a contractive state measurement. Uh, contractive state measurement is something very special kind of measure, uh, state, uh, which, uh, of which the uh, wave packet becomes uh, shrinking according to the time evolution. <coughs> However, in 1985, uh, Carlton Caves criticized uh, UN's argument and questioned the reali realizability of such kind of the contractive state measurement. Uh, According to uh, such uh, the, some uh, common uh, sense, uh, contractive state uh, is the very, has a very broad wave packet. If your measurement leaves the object in very broad uh, wave packet, uh, then it is natural in that time uh, they consider that measurement cannot be very precise. Then uh, such a, a noisy measurement uh, cannot uh, circumvent such a uh, kind of the limitation of the measurement. However, in 1988, uh, I showed that a contract state measurement can be realized, and indeed uh, the standard quantum limit is broken by this model. Now we discuss uh, such kind of the mathematical model uh, which uh, break uh, uh, Heisenberg's relation. Uh, before uh, 1988, uh, in which uh, I presented a new model, but before in 1988, only one model of position measurement was known. That is uh, von Neumann's model. This model uh, is uh, presented in von Neumann's uh, famous book. Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Mechanics. In the last uh, section, he devoted to describe uh, this model. Um, his model uh, has uh, interaction between object and probe. That interaction has this form. Uh, X is a probe position, PY is a, mo um, I'm sorry, X is an object position, um, PY is a probe momentum. So they have the coupling between uh, this X and the PY. <coughs> <coughs> then uh, this model measurement uh, satisfies a Heisenberg relation. Uh, we will show uh, just later. Then uh, in 98, another model uh, that I call error-free contractive state measurement was found. Uh, we 
change the uh, coupling between an object and the uh, probe to be in this form. So uh, in this form, uh, this original coupling of von Neumann is uh, still here. However, we have a reverse uh, interaction here. And this reverse interaction uh, plays some role of the canceling the uh, noise from this coupling. So uh, on the effect, uh, this uh, model has no uh, error. So noiseless measurement can be obtained from this model. So von Neumann's measurement is as follows. So coupling is here. And then uh, solving Heisenberg's equation motion, uh, we consider the uh, measurement time is from time zero to delta t, and the coupling constant uh, times time duration is uh, assumed to be normalized to be one. Then um, by solving the Heisenberg equation, uh, we get uh, this relation. <coughs> So uh, there are, by the interaction, uh, position cannot be, does not change because uh, Hamiltonian uh, interaction on commuting with uh, position. And also the, this commuting with uh, probe momentum, so uh, probe momentum does not change. However, uh, and the meta operator is assumed to be the probe position after the interaction. So uh, in order to uh, measure x, you look at uh, probe position after the interaction. And this is, in the Heisenberg picture, uh, x plus uh, initial uh, probe position. So this y behaves like a noise operator. <coughs> so uh, measured observable is x, meta observable is uh, y delta t is x plus y. And momentum change is, uh, <coughs> uh, no, uh, sorry. Uh, initial momentum is uh, by, and the momentum change is px minus, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, <coughs> initial momentum is uh, operator px, and uh, uh, momentum after the interaction, um, it's uh, oh, uh, given in this form. Uh, then, uh, in this case, uh, a0 and M delta T commute. Uh, A0 and M delta T commute. And also B0 and B delta T commute. Uh, so uh, we define the root mean square error and the root mean square disturbance uh, from the classical uh, definition um, ambiguously. Uh, so then uh, we get uh, this uh, <coughs> relation. Uh, so there are uh, Noise is a difference of from two, so noise operator is one. So the uh, root mean square noise is just a uh, uh, squared mean of this uh, uh, probe position. And the uh, difference of this is just uh, y. So this is uh, the momentum uh, disturbance is just the uh, initial momentum operator. So by the uh, relation between uh, second moment and uh, um, variance, uh, we obtain the relation of the uh, noise times uh, disturbance is larger than uh, standard deviation y and the standard deviation py. So uh, this is always uh, larger than or equal to a half of uh, h bar. Now we consider the uh, new model. Uh, new model has this uh, interaction and then solving the Heisenberg uh, equation motion, we get this relation. So uh, in this relation, the uh, probe position after the interaction is just equal to initial <coughs> position operator. This means uh, this measurement has no uh, noise. And then a momentum uh, disturbance is cal calculated by difference of these uh, two operators. Then uh, we obtain, uh, <coughs> so measured observable this, uh, meta observable this. So the difference is zero. So we have the zero uh, root mean square. And uh, initial momentum this, final momentum this. So those two operators are commuting. So in this case also, uh, A0 and M delta T commute, and B0 and B delta T commute. So root mean square error, the root mean square disturbance is unambiguously defined from the classical formula. Uh, so we get this formula. And uh, 
if you consider the uh, very uh, smooth uh, initial state, we obtain and this uh, momentum is always uh, finite. So zero times finite becomes uh, zero. So the product of the noise and the disturbance is always uh, zero in this model. So uh, we can um, <coughs> break the uh, Heisenberg uncertainty <coughs> relation. And also, we have shown that uh, this model uh, breaks the uh, standard quantum limit. And so uh, this is useful. And also, this, is, uh, this breaks uh, Heisenberg relation. And uh, after the Heisenberg's paper in 1929, Heisenberg's uh, Kennard relation, I'm sorry, Kennard relation uh, for standard deviations uh, has been extended for arbitrary uh, operators. Then uh, from this uh, generalized form of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, it's uh, considered to be in this form. <laughs> and so there are people who uh, naively considered uh, this relation um, <coughs> holds. However, uh, we already have uh, the counterexample of this relation for even in the special case of P and Q. Then the problem is that what is the uh, <coughs> relation for uh, such a mathematically defined uh, noise and disturbance? And I, my problem is that uh, so something very uh, universal uh, relation should be obtained. So uh, <coughs> I, will, I have obtained the following relation. <coughs> we define the uh, mean noise and the mean disturbance operator. Uh, th this operator is a uh, noise operator, and this is the disturbance operator. We just take a partial uh, mean, um, because this operator is an uh, operator on the pr tensor product space of the probe and the object. Now we just uh, take a mean over the uh, probe system only. This is like a, a kind of partial trace. Uh, and then uh, this mean operator uh, is very uh, useful role to obtain those uh, relations. Uh, so uh, this is uh, Robertson's uh, lower bound. And uh, we have proved that uh, this uh, sum of those three terms are larger than this lower bound. And uh, from the Robertson relation, it's easy to show that uh, this quantity uh, it's uh, uh, this quantity larger than this uh, commutator, and this quantity larger than this commutator. <coughs> so we have this uh, relation. And then uh, if those two terms are zero, we obtain the original <coughs> Heisenberg relation. And uh, what, when uh, these uh, terms should be zero is that <coughs> um, if this operator is a, a scalar operator, <coughs> then uh, B is operator on H, and this is A, and A is a scalar operator on H, then uh, this commutator vanish. And this is also the same if this is a. So uh, the condition that the original Heisenberg relation holds is that uh, those two operators are, are scalar operator. And you take uh, some kind of the, uh, partial uh, trace on the uh, uh, probe system. So the condition that uh, this is a uh, scalar operator is that the uh, noise and disturbance are statistically independent uh, from the uh, object state. <coughs> so if the noise and disturbance are statistically independent from the object state uh, or uh, NA and D, D uh, constant operator, then we have the original relation. Otherwise, we need uh, those three terms. Uh, and this is always holds, and uh, this is called universal uh, relation. And then uh, from this, <coughs> uh, we have some cases. Uh, if eta b is equal to 0, by uh, substituting this relation, we obtain uh, two terms are, uh, vanish, and we obtain this relation. So this relation is if you have the uh, zero disturbance measurement, then uh, you will obtain the uh, noise is reciprocal with the initial, uh, <coughs> initial uncertainty of B operator. If, if your uh, measurement is uh, noiseless, disturbance is reciprocal with uh, the initial uh, dis 
initial standard deviation of A operator. <coughs> and uh, recently, a, a branch yard uh, obtained uh, this uh, complicated relation, but he proved that uh, this is a tight uh, relation. And uh, my relation shows the uh, <coughs> admissible region for, from the Heisenberg relation is uh, over this uh, hyperboloid. Then uh, my relation just uh, rewrite in this way, and then uh, we have the, another uh, hyperboloid, and uh, we <coughs> allow uh, this uh, region. So the, this intermediate region, Heisenberg profited, but my relation allowed. <coughs> and then uh, the problem is that really we can uh, make a measurement with such an uh, uh, intermediate uh, region. Heisenberg prohibit, uh, my relation allowed. <coughs> In order to do that, uh, we need to uh, study more about the error and the disturbance. Uh, first, uh, relation show that uh, error and determined only P of M of measurement. Second relation show that disturbance is determined only a TPCP map of the measurement. TPCP map means that non-selective state change of the measurement. <coughs> And then uh, the, so, such a, a definition of the measurement error and disturbance are very closely related to weak values. In 1988, uh, I introduced uh, the root mean square uh, using uh, this formula. Uh, the, this is uh, output probability in, in the state of the psi. And this is uh, original uh, probability distribution. And output is uh, always can be written in this form with some uh, modification. And then uh, this modification is just uh, considered as a conditional uh, probability of the uh, output uh, small a conditional upon the uh, real value is x. So uh, I defined uh, initially the root mean square in this form. And this uh, uh, term is, at that time, in 1980, called uh, the resolution amplitude. But uh, now, the resolution amplitude, uh, this term is known as the weak value of uh, a P of M element in prior state by this formula. <coughs> so in general, uh, we have shown that uh, root mean square error is uh, the uh, this classical kind of the uh, mean square error uh, mean <coughs> formula are uh, using the uh, joint weak probability distribution. And this relation I found uh, in 1991 and 2005. And then uh, this relation uh, also uh, independently found by a <coughs> Weizmann and Lund uh, in 2010, and they he uses uh, this relation to propose the experimental confirmation uh, of uh, my relation for uh, some uh, kind of spin measurement. And also, uh, I already proposed another way to uh, confirm my relation uh, using different methods, three-state methods. I written in this, this method in 2004 paper. Uh, this is just uh, some uh, rewriting of this uh, cross term. With this uh, term, then uh, we have this. And this show that uh, this part is our second moment of the output in this state. This is second moment of object or operator in this state. This is a uh, um, first moment of the uh, output. Every time, term is the second moment or first moment uh, from the uh, measuring apparatus in some prepared state. So we, if you uh, prepare such a state, we get the uh, root mean square from the uh, output of the given uh, apparatus. Then uh, we apply this consideration to uh, uh, spin measurement. Uh, we consider the <coughs> spin sigma uh, x is uh, measured by the apparatus which make a projective measurement of this operator. In this case, there are uh, some mismatching of the direction occurs, and then error is 
error uh, depending on this dis mismatching uh, angle. Uh, so we have the uh, error to be the uh, two times sine and one half of pi and the disturbance to be uh, square root of two times cosine of this phi. In that case, we calculate uh, to be, uh, for this uh, angle uh, region, uh, the product of the uh, error and the disturbance is always low, smaller than lower bound. Then th this experiment was carried out by the research reactor facility, trigger mark two of this uh, Vienna University of Technology by a group led by uh, Yuji Hasegawa. And this is uh, the picture, but uh, uh, this uh, experiment will be uh, very precisely uh, uh, explained by uh, Yuji later. Uh, so we skip uh, this part. Uh, and we obtain this uh, data published in Nature Physics. And then uh, we obtain, really, the uh, experimental data show that uh, we uh, share this uh, intermediate region. And then a uh, second uh, measurement, uh, second experiment uh, <coughs> has been done by the group uh, led by uh, Steinberg. Uh, and uh, they realized uh, Lund Weizmann's uh, weak measurement method. And he, they get a very a nice uh, result. <coughs> and then recently, the group in Japan uh, uses uh, uh, three-step methods for the similar uh, measuring apparatus uh, uh, studied by a Steinberg's group. Uh, we obtain uh, the similar uh, slightly better data from the three-state method. Uh, so uh, now, when we, I started the uh, research, it, uh, such a uh, violation of the hydrogen uncertainty principle is quite uh, questionable. Uh, but uh, uh, now, the hydrogen uncertainty principle is stressed in new tests. And then, a common interpretation of the hydrogen uncertainty principle is uh, probed uh, false. Thank you very much for listening. Um, as far as I could see, uh, you used in your derivation that the initial state of the measurement apparatus can be described as a pure state. I think this is physically uh, uh, incorrect, but could you, uh, if you describe your initial state by uh, uh, mixed states, would your relations still hold? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, my paper uh, in Annals of Physics uh, written in for uh, mixed state. Uh, Masano, I tried, uh, I, I followed your talk a few times, and I tried to understand why your uncertainty relations is in some way weaker than standard Heisenberg. And today you point to interest relation to weak measurement and post-selection. Can we tell that you just update your information with the aid of post-selection, and therefore your uncertainty is not so strong as it was in Heisenberg. What is wrong uh, viewpoint? Uh, Just to get into intuitive picture. I think picture. Uh, some uh, newspaper or coverage uh, reported in this way. However, it's uh, entirely uh, misunderstood. Uh, misunderstood. Yeah, okay, because uh, uh, weak measurement used for, uh, weak measurement is used for determine the noise and determine the disturbance. Uh, it's not the uh, apparatus. Apparatus be uses the uh, usual uh, strong measurement. However, it's a very complicated situation in that. We have the uh, apparatus, and we define the noise and disturbance for this apparatus. But then, uh, in order to uh, study the relation between noise and disturbance of this apparatus, you need another measuring apparatus to measure this noise, and another part of measure this disturbance. And such a measurement is very difficult, because the, such a quantity is a difference of the initial uh, operator and the final operator. If you measure initial operator, and if the, those two are non-commuting, then a measurement of the initial operator disturbs the final operator. So you cannot uh, 
precise uh, determination of the root mean square difference. Uh, in order to make such a, uh, in order to um, root mean square difference measurement, uh, if you make a measurement of the first operator very weakly, <laughs> without uh, disturbing, then uh, the second uh, strong measurement can be done without uh, cost, with, um, without a, any effect from the dif disturbance from the first measurement. However, weak measurement will give you very um, subtle result. However, you can, uh, the point is that the uh, major uh, noise and disturbance is de uh, defined to be the uh, um, average quantity. You don't need uh, each data. Uh, so uh, you need to, uh, uh, the bulk of data which shows you the correct me mean value. So the weak measurement can be done repeatedly many times. Then the data show you the precise uh, mean error or mean square error. Um. What you would say about the more general form of the uncertainty principle like uh, Robertson Schrodinger uncertainty principle? Does it fall in your class of... What do you uh, mean general? <laughs> my, I mean, my relation is general enough because it covers it, all the measurements. But I understand it's less general than uh, Robertson Schrodinger form. What do you mean Robertson Schrodinger is general? Yes, yes. Huh? Uh -huh. I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. so, thank you. Um, wh what is your opinion about modification of uncertainty relation due to gravity? For example, uh, the uncertainty relation derived in string theories or uh, with micro black hole experiment, Gedanken experiments. Mm -hmm. what, what is your opinion about this kind of modification? Of the uh, I'm sorry, relation. I didn't uh, study these uh, topics. Uh, 